I think it is very important to understand uh, better what it is uh, uh, the substrate uh, of atrial fibrillation. At the moment we are skirting around the causes. We are very good at preventing uh, uh, thromboembolic events with anticoagulation. When that is applied properly it has a profound effect and so so far we should consider that our number one strategy and then you know in terms of curing or preventing atrial fibrillation, I think we still have a, a long way to go. Uh, I would say that, and the new guidelines are actually showing that, uh, that you really need a, a better understanding of so the various uh, uh, causes that are underlying atrial fibrillation in order to be able to tailor treatment to individual patients. Uh, we're not there yet, but there is a lot of research and there are um, changes in the way we think of atrial fibrillation, not just as a rhythm problem, but as a cardiomyopathy of the atria, as a problem related to fibro fibrosis, to metabolism, and all of that, uh, I think, uh, will, is likely to take us closer to a real cure. It would be excellent uh, if drugs such as uh, statins would also uh, have antiarrhythmic effects and there have been a number of small studies that suggested that that might be the case however our study that was much bigger than all of the other studies put together unfortunately showed that the perioperative treatment with statins has no effect on post-operative atrial fibrillation or other complication as well as the uh, myocardial damage in the perioperative period and that was of course disappointing uh, but uh, what it was if you like even worse is that uh, Against this lack of a beneficial effect, there was uh, an uh, uh, adverse effect on uh, renal complications. So there, there was an uh, absolute 5% increase uh, in acute kidney injury, uh, albeit mostly mild, in patients who were randomized to taking rosuvastatin 20 milligrams daily. That was unexpected, uh, but uh, since we have produced these results, another paper has been published uh, uh, using perioperative atovastatin. It was published in JAMA, uh, showing very similar effect in statin naive patients. So if you don't have a beneficial effect and you have even a small risk of an adverse effect, then that uh, becomes really, if you like, a contraindication of having a perioperative statin treatment right in that week around. Uh, uh. This is not to be confused though with uh, the uh, long-term effect of statins in primary and secondary prevention where an adverse effect on kidney function was never demonstrated. So that continues to be safe, continues to be extremely useful, is just in the perioperative period. Silencing of RNA or, or uh, inhibition of microRNAs is something that is in the pipeline. People are trying to uh, have therapeutic strategies that are looking at this. Of course, microRNAs uh, are very good targets because they are pleiotropic. Uh, they, uh, you know, by inhibiting a, a microRNA, you can then have an effect on several pathways. Uh, that is both an advantage and a disadvantage. Uh, at the moment, we still don't know how to target uh, an, an antisense or a, a, a micro or an, an antagomer, if you like, to a specific tissue, particularly the heart. And that is one of the main limitations. Uh, it has been good for the liver because when, once you inject something, it will eventually go to the liver. But it, when you are trying to look at uh, organs such as the heart, I think we still have to develop ways of targeting and making it also cell-specific.